is the 2012 MacBook Pro was buying in 2021. Let's get into it. Hello guys, Alva here, and today I want to give my personal opinion and judgment whether you should get yourself the 2012 15-inch Net Retina Unibody MacBook Pro. First, let's talk about the body. It's 15-inch with around 5.6 pounds or 2.5 kilograms, so it's a bit heavy. And if we look around, we can see it have a lot of ports. On the left side, we have the MagSafe charging port, the internet cable port, FireWire to connect external hard drives, Thunderbolt to connect external display, two USB Type 3 to charge your device and connect external storage, SD slot to transfer photos from your camera's memory card, headphone port, and speaker port. On the right side, we have case slot or security slot, and super drive for CDs and DVDs. Yeah. Like I said, it have a lot of ports, but it's still useful. All right, next, let's talk about the keyboard and the trackpad. This keyboard feels pretty amazing to use. This is the original Chicle keyboard. This is one of the best keyboards on a Mac. Trackpad is multi-touch for precise cursor control, and it's pretty smooth to use. It supports inertial scrolling, pitch, rotate, swipe, three finger swipe, four finger swipe, tap, double tap, and drag capabilities. The other thing I like about this mark are the speakers because the volume and the sound quality of these speakers are spectacular, especially compared to a pieces of that time. Let's put it to test. Let's talk about the performance. So, in my honest opinion, one of the most unique features of this Mac are the fact that the storage and the RAM are upgradable. It has two types of processors, one with 2.3 GHz quad-core i7 with turbo boost up to 3.3 GHz with 4 gigs of RAM, 1600 MHz DDR3 memory, and you can upgrade it up to 8 gigs of RAM and 1 terabyte of storage. The other one has 2.6 GHz quad core i7 turbo boost up to 3.6 GHz with 8 gigs of RAM and 1600 MHz DDR3 memory, and it is upgradable to 16 gigs of RAM and 1 terabyte of SSD storage. Alright, next. Let's talk about the software. So, if you were in the Apple ecosystem long enough, you should probably know by now that the MacBook Pro 2012 come with one of the oldest versions of macOS, which is macOS Mountain Lion 10.8. But, if what I'm talking about does not make sense to you, let me explain a bit. Apple makes its own software and names them perfectly after random places and animals in California, which starts from Cheetah and goes up to Man Ray. This Max version is right here in the middle, which is macOS Mountain Lion, and you can upgrade it till macOS Catalina, but you have to go upgrade it from macOS Mountain Lion and jump to El Capitan, the Sierra, High Sierra, Mojave, finally Catalina, which it is the latest provided version for this Mac. It still receives security and Safari updates, and you can update it to the latest version of the macOS, which is macOS Pixel, using a patcher, but I don't recommend it. And now, let's talk about all other aspects of this Mac. The battery will be good if it is taken care of perfectly. You will be experiencing probably 4 up to 5 hours of screen time, but the screen is one of the downside of this Mac. I will not lie, but the screen quality is not the best, especially if you compare it to a current MacBook. It is LED, buckled glassy, and it has the resolution up to 1440 by 900, which it is pretty unfortunate. It was great back in the days, but now a bit lacking, but compared to some of the other stuff out there, it's still comfy enough. So, we talked about almost all of the boys you should know about this Mac. 
the price is so adequate, you can upgrade almost everything to fit your need and you can show I any kind of normal day-to-day -day tasks and it should work sufficiently but don't expect things like high-end editing, gaming or other heavy stuffs. So is it worth it? I think so but what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section below.